Hello there, friends, old and new. Welcome back to my world in progress world. This is my new single player building series in my old original Minecraft world. It's not that old, it's only like two years old, but you know, that's how long I've been playing Minecraft. So when I started this world, I really wanted to work on builds that felt like they belonged in Studio Ghibli. And as you can see, I've been planting many, many fields and we're returning to this area today with some intentional Studio Ghibli style building. Now, there are many parts of my building that I want to work on as I work through this world. Two of those are detail, which I think we did pretty well with on this build, and then color. And I am i haven't been great with using color in my builds so far. I don't have zoom, so pretend I'm zooming into my face for dramatic effect when I say, today, we're going to change that. Now, as you can see when I fly around here, I have various structures marked out with wool and then we're gonna fill in the rest of these fields with just crops and good gravy I have severely underestimated how much time and effort it takes to plant large amounts of crops this has been ridiculous we will continue as we go but for now I wanted to kind of plop some things down and look at what we're going to be building because we are going to be building in this spot. And it's just gonna be a little like gardener's tool shed kind of thing. And I am planning to go with basically a palette of blue, but more like a deep true cyan. Like I'm still debating if I'm even gonna use prismarine bricks, but we're gonna go for like a deep true cyan house with then a living roof with mud and moss and then things like drip leaf and we'll put a boat on there to make the drip leaf move around. And then we'll have some things like bamboo for our windows and doors and things like that, I think. There are several layers to what we're gonna be doing today. Obviously we have the actual structure itself first and then we have like this little space out to the side that kind of drops off and we'll put a retaining wall in. Then we have this back area which I think just needs a little terraforming. I like the little pond that I put in here because it just wasn't, the, the train wasn't great for anything else and I didn't want to like completely change it, you know? But I think what let's do is let's start placing the blue blocks first. Now we have a variety of blue blocks to use. So first of all, let's lay them out and kind of look at them in terms of luminosity. Well, obviously that is our darkest. So I think we get dark next. This maybe? No, I think that might be our lightest actually. Yeah, that's our lightest. This house is small enough that I don't think I'm going to add any sort of framework to the exterior. So it's just gonna be a little blue box at first. And then we will add a little bit of extra shape on it. And well, eventually we'll get to the detailing part, which is the best part in my opinion. So my question here is, where do we put our darkest shadows? Do we put them in the corners? Do we put them under the roof? Like that seems, the roof seems like a reasonable place for our darkest shadows. In some ways, I feel like the side of the house would probably catch like sunlight or like the corner, not the side, would probably catch sunlight the most frequently. And maybe this front corner of the house is the one that catches the most sunlight. So our light is, like catching the corners and the bottoms of the house a little bit more, of the shed. I don't like that it's right flush against the edge of the dirt though. So I think what we'll do is we'll probably build it out a little bit more. And then up along the top, get a little bit more dark. Maybe this one, this corner is our darkest corner, right? We might, might wanna make this a little bit bigger area of brightness. I was recently talking to a friend of mine who is a fantastic builder and I've done builds with her and learned a lot from her, but she convinced me to join the bakery discord, which I didn't even know was like just open and available to join. And the whole heckin server is open and available to join, which I think is really neat. And oh my goodness, the amount of inspiration that is there and just like, perusing people's things, going and watching different building creators from the bakery server and stuff like that has been really, really helpful 
in just me thinking a little bit more like deliberately about how I build. So I am excited to finally be putting a little bit of that like inspiration and excitement to good use here. Let's run off to the side and see how that looks. Okay. I feel like we need one more block in this palette and I think it actually needs to be between the wool and the wart and I think concrete, I think cyan concrete might actually fill that nicely. Here we go. That definitely has some good shadow and highlight elements to it. We're also going to put that across the top. Um, and maybe darken up just a little bit more of our spots under the roofs. Well, this is a very tiny build to be doing any sort of gradient work with, but I think we did at least get some of the effect that we want and it's just a box right now. So now we need to detail it. Okay, and then we're gonna do one of these doors. Boom. This is a really good little starting frame. I love the colors so far. So our roof is going to have moss, maybe a little wool, and definitely some mud. And it's going to be outlined in deep slate bricks. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna do stairs. Where's my stone cutter? There it is. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna do stairs or just blocks. Okay, let's go out and look at how the Stairs versus the, oh, definitely the stairs. Definitely the stairs. They add a little bit more depth and shape. And once we add the details to the roof, like these aren't gonna look like just blocks anymore. So this roof idea came into my brain when B00 was looking at like different ways to use the angle of drip leaf. And well, he didn't want the motion of like just having an entity on top of the drip leaf constantly pushing it down. I do. I like that idea. So that's why we're using mud. All right. Well, I think the next thing is going to be a floor. I think a floor is important. So what if, and hear me out on this. What if we used a little bit of glazed terracotta in our floor? You know I love doing my glazed terracotta floors. Here we go. There's our cute little floor. Oh, wandering trader. Don't crumple, crumple, don't trample my crops. What if, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Ugh, rude. What if we integrated a little bit more color? Because right now it's all kind of one color and then a roof. But I think that kind of misses the point of having color in a build where you want colors to work together. Oh my goodness. We should add some things in here. It's actually quite roomy. Um, so if we add like a couple of piles of barrels, for example, go that way. Then we'll get some slabs and trap doors on the floor. And we'll just kind of do like different piles of things for different crops, I think. Well, this is definitely getting adorable. I love it. And I love that our sight lines are going up a little bit more with the addition of those. I do think we need another light in here. Now we've got a lot of exterior work to do. I want to mess around just a little bit with adding like some streaks. <laughs> To the side of the building. Now, I want to put it on that side, I think. But let's run down and take a quick little look at this side. Yeah, this side doesn't have a lot of room for streaks. Oh, yeah! I've ah! Now I'm breaking my wheat. I really like how that looks. Uh, one thing about the interior here is that we don't have a lot of, like, division between where the roof starts. And I think we need some sort of like crown molding or something like that, you know? Let's see, what have we got? There we go. That works. I like that. Oh, look at how the shading looks as you fly up to it. That's actually really cool. And then with the lights at the front of the house, it just makes it even more like noticeable and it works really well. And oh, this is okay, okay. We're doing good stuff here. 
Oh, don't look at me like that. You're out here breaking my stuff and then look at me indignantly when you do it. Like, nah. Wait, so there's a couple of things we're gonna try here. You see how? Because mud has a lower hitbox, when I stand on this, it just kind of sways up and down a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set our bamboo raft here. And let's try F3B, just so we can see exactly where the hitboxes are. There we go. I think that boats are one of the cutest details that you can use in a build, and people just don't use them as frequently as they should, I think. Cause, like, that's amazing. You know, the only thing that would make that better is that. Oh, and I'm so glad I could add it without having to take the boat away. And then we just start adding stuff like this all over. I'm gonna waterlog this stair and the sign, yep, should keep the water from running around. We should be able to add some sugar cane. Perfect. I love it. I'm gonna add like a few bamboo pieces with string. And then over on this side, I wanna experiment with a couple of things here. Let's try the pointed dripstone though, because like, I think this could work really well. All right, let's fly off and take a quick little look at what all these look like. I think the, okay, the little fan isn't as good as I wanted. Maybe I might even just drop it down. Yeah, I might just drop it down um, a block. But I really like this. I like the moving drip leaf. I should add some other drip leaf around too. Yeah, I like that. I think that works. Let's try adding one more wall to it now. And we've got a little bit of motion with the drip leaf. Now the next spot that I want to turn my attention to is the rest of the exterior, the exterior that's down at the ground. Okay, I am so ready to get going on the next bits around this exterior, but for a second, let's talk about the apparent elephant in the room. I was showing this to the aforementioned friend who invited me to the bakery server, and she mentioned that it looked a lot like a green build in the current season of Hermitcraft, and also a build from a builder that I vaguely recognize the name of, but I've never actually like seen anything from as far as I know. Th that was an accident. I did not realize that it looked like greens until I put the scaffolding in the windows and I went, oh no, oh no. I went through several iterations of color palettes for this build and this was just like my favorite idea that I had and so we went with it. So what this area is, is this is a little almost carport, but more like just machinery mechanic port. There will be machinery around this area. I have, I have so many plans for like super highly detailing this entire region. I'm so excited for it. Very obsessed at the moment. Um, but this spot is gonna be, you know, where they would pull up the tractor to work on it. I wanted to put a little bit of like oil stains maybe. Is the rooted dirt good? Hmm, I, I think I wanna go with coarse dirt there. Yeah, that's more the color we're looking for, I think. A little bit more of that dark kind of color. With this being a little mechanics spot, we need to have some details around and we're gonna add a bunch of those details to this wall here. So then we're gonna start out with these little guys. Jim and Jim go. I just think it's cute. Take a little tripwire hook and basically what we want to do here is we just want to make things look detailed and interesting <laughs> at the end of the day. So then we're gonna add a couple of smithing tables as basically a, oop, a toolbox. And then we're not gonna get like two in the way of the window. Actually, I might wanna go with mangrove signs for that. There we go. And it's a little red toolbox, just like all the toolboxes of all the airplane mechanics I know. I feel like that's perfect. I really, I think I really like this retaining wall, including like the sandstone drippiness. I. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure when I built it, but I think I like it now. Oh yes, and 
I have finally decided, after learning from friends exactly how data packs work, to add the armor statues, data pack, and the mini block stuff to this world. Now I keep forgetting that I need a very specific object at this building. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and stick it like right here, I think. Cute, awesome, love it. Oh. I forgot something crucial here. And I can just walk out my window here. Go zoop, and there we go. Amazing. All right, we're definitely descending nose first into full on solar punk vibe here, but honestly, I don't hate it. Solar punk is like my ideal world. Very hopeful, very conscious of how we interact with the world. So, we'll put one there and let's find another spot for the second one. So, we're gonna add a couple of things around. Fence gate and fence gate. And then we put our daylight detector on top. There we go. And I don't even need to make the item frame disappear even though I can now that we have the armor stance plugin. All right, well, let's take a little look at this. Oh my goodness, I love it. Yes, yes, this is exactly what I wanted this to be. I feel like, I feel like the fence post doesn't quite work there though, but I'm not sure what else to put underneath it. Yeah, I think that works a lot better. It's a little weird. It kind of looks like a toddler robot in a diaper. And I can't really unsee that now. All right, now we take in the whole thing in its little glory. I love this. This is adorable. I find it kind of funny that in each of my major builds in this world, like I've gravitated towards using sandstone. And the thing is, we have to have a lore reason for that, right? Because it is a pattern. Um, unintentional, but a pattern nevertheless. There's, whoa, oh, that, oh, oh, that particle looked like a slime coming from my face. That was an interesting experience just now. All right, then, I don't know, like, there's something to be said just about, like, the climate of this world, and, like, sandstone is a lighter thing, so it's gonna be absorbing less, uh, light and less heat from the sun and all of that, and I guess we could say it's a uh, close by, like, material commodity that they can get easily. I don't know. Something like that. You know, to explain why it's being used in more of a paving kind of situation there. Okay, well the next thing I need to work on in this spot... Where'd the cow go? Did the cow get itself out? Impressive, little guy! You look hopelessly stuck, though. The next thing I need to work on is this pond here that kind of flows out into this river area, but before we do that, I need to do something else. Now, I've been accumulating quite a good number of smithing templates. We've got some flow here. Oh, I still don't have guster, actually, but flow is what we need. Okay, I guess we'll have to fly over here because apparently those uh, smithing tables that I just put in are the only ones I have around here. Obviously, this one's going on the helmet. Ugh. Yes, copper is the best trim material, in my opinion. Oh yeah, look at that. And we can't see it, really, but we got little goat horns. Let's see if we can't... Yeah, we can see it in our inventory. Yeah. And, well, they may not be deer antlers, but... Close enough, and besides, goats are my all-time favorite animals, so it works out. Here's the thing, guys. If we're gonna lean into the, uh, goat horns helmet, we need another armor trim to go along with it. You see where this is going yet? Yeah, we gotta pop into some bastions, unfortunately for me. And I don't have any gold armor items on me, so we're just gonna have to go for it. 
Oof, look at the colors. This is where the frog light farm would be. This little this big old basalt delta. And there is a fortress there. I need a fortress in the soul sand valley, though. Well, there's a ghast. Alright. Keep going this way. There we go. That's a bastion. Whew. Okay. There's the advancement. I need glowstone, though, first. Let's go over there. Alright. Angry piglins. There he is. Angry boy. Oh, I didn't realize the respawn anchors made portal noises. Oh, I never actually set the respawn point. There we go. Oh, he dropped a head. <gasps> Is that my first mob head? Hey, hey. I will take that, that, and all of those. I will just, yes. And while we're he here, we will also grab the gilded blackstone. Because I am a magpie and I like shiny things. Usually there's a dude around here, but I think we already killed that guy. Hey, I'll take that. Oh my lord. No. No. Why are you like this? Go away. There are a lot of zombified piglins in here and not a lot of others. Can you imagine if piglin brutes could become zombified? Or like, if there was a variation of zombified piglin that was like zombified piglin brute, that would be terrifying. What's really funny is when you snipe them from far away and they have no idea what happened and they don't seem to particularly care all that much. And this, my friends, is what we call the stealth archer. Nice! That was a shot. There it is. I mean, I could leave right this second. But that would be a little less fun. Whoa! Whoa! No, 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 no. Woo! No, 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 no. You do not. No, you don't get to do that. Where did that come from? Did he spawn up here, maybe? That sounds like piglins. But the question is, are those piglins here? Well, they're down there. There are so many of them. Oh my goodness. Okay. There are no longer so many of them. Heck yeah! Amazing! Oh, there's still a piglin up there. How did we miss you? Awesome. And then from here... We first deal with the gas because otherwise it won't be fun. And then... We grab our things. And there we go. Amazing. Oh my goodness. That was... Honestly, more successful than I was expecting. Ow. It's like the most damage I took in this entire thing too. Yeah, it's just plain blackstone. Awesome. Alright, so if you thought that I was going to go ahead and add the cute little hoof bits to my boots, <laughs> you were absolutely correct. Look at those! They're so cute! And I, 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 I love them. Now, I'm not sure where to put this brute head quite yet, but it is going to have to go somewhere very special. All right, let me know down in the comments what you think would be a good trim to put on my pants. Now, let's take a little moment to assess this, like, backyard bit. I do like the shape that we have going on here. It was a pretty natural train shape, and I just dug it out a little bit to make make this bit work a little better. Um, I don't know why these keep happening in this world specifically. I hate Minecraft water physics. They're terrible. I, mm, don't even get me started, to be honest. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is a patented D pond? Or you may not, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Heck yes, we can do this. That makes this process a lot easier. All right. So, way back at the beginning of this channel, I did a 30 days of building series in the first January that I had my channel. 
terrible idea for me because that was a lot to like make and edit those videos every day. Um, but I did learn a lot. One of my very favorite things that came out of that that clearly I still use was my pond build. Now, said pond build was made up of mud in some places and some mossy cobblestone in others and just plain moss in even other places. And I believe there was clay involved too. I'm not sure that I actually have much clay. I'm gonna have to go take a quick little look. Now, I'm a much better builder than I was then, but I still really like just the way this combination of blocks works and how the underwater area looks after it's all been built. Um, so you'll see that I use this same palette quite frequently in many different places at many different skill levels. The frog lights are very important because look what it looks like without light. It looks fine. Um, but then you add in a frog light and oh my goodness, the underwater experience just absolutely glows. So that's what like just the plain pool looks like. But then we start adding details too. One of my favorites, the redstone ore. And then we go soul sand. We add just a couple of little spots, but then we get all of our details in like coral and little amethyst buds around and things like that. And then we dive down underneath and we look at what they look like and they're beautiful. I'm gonna put a little bit of cobblestone here under the waterfall, kind of where the water has been churning a lot and probably, you know, breaking things up a little more. And there we go. I think with some extra rocky bits, a little bit of bone meal and a little bit of flowers around, I think this looks pretty nice. And there's even fish swimming in. Oh, that's perfect. I love that. I think I might have a few tropical fish around, but honestly, with this tendency, plus this going out into the river, there's there's no reason, I think, to bring them in here. The salmon are really cute. I love the salmon. Now, this little bit here is gonna be an interesting one because I want it to stay mostly, you know, it's nice, normal, natural terrain. Like, I think, I think that's great and all, but it does look a little awkward and I think we just need to add a little bit more natural environment to it. Maybe we add some rocks, both like big ones and small ones like uh, buttons and pressure plates too. Anywhere I see a single block just sitting there, they're going away. We finally got rid of Enderman griefing here. And I will not stand for things that even look like they've been Enderman griefed. The salmon gone already. Well, that's mildly hilarious anyways. Let's start off with a big kind of boulder. And I feel like this spot where the terrain kind of naturally has a little bit of a divot here. I think that's a good spot to put the rock kind of in the midst slash at the top of. All right, so we've got one cute little rock. Yeah, but we have another problem now. And that is our lighting. We're gonna put a few of them around the rock faces. And as an added benefit, it helps break up some of the cobblestone texture a little bit too. Woo! Woo! That was actually really funny. Did you guys see that? Dudes that fell had exactly zero chance. Um. So then the last couple of things I think to round this area out is a few smaller stones and some bone meal. Yeah, it's not super fancy, but it does definitely give a little bit more life and detail to the area. And I think it's also an interesting like environmental detail that like this particular little bit is super rocky, which must be why, you know, this area hasn't eroded away and a lot of the fields are lower down because this particular hill, for whatever reason, is super rocky and all the other bits kind of washed away a little. All right, and then right there, we're gonna add just a little light plinth 
Or actually, ooh, ooh, wait, I, I, um, I know what we're doing. We're not gonna do a lantern. Cause lanterns are cute, but they don't quite go with the machine shop vibe out back here. We do one of these. And then we'll just set the lantern kind of at the, the headwaters there. Perfect. I think that works better. We did some good work here. I really like, I really, really like this. We really went ahead and put so much detail in this. I don't think I pointed it out, but I did add a little bit more to the roof with like leaves and things like that so that it looked a little more interesting, had a little more shape and didn't, and, and looked a little more coherent as well. I love our interior very much. I think this has been a fantastic build and I have learned a lot from it. Chief among those things being that shading looks a little awkward at first, but it does pay off in the end. Like this looks beautiful. Now, this is exactly the kind of thing that I want to continue doing around this world. Adding these super highly detailed builds with bits of lore, and then even making sure that we have detail going on in all the bits between. So we will continue, you know, adding things like vehicles and um, probably like hay bales and wheelbarrows. Over here, I added some sunflowers into our wheat patch and I really, really love it. And I've seen lots of people do this, so definitely not original idea. But I do wanna mix more of those into our wheat fields around here as well. And the fun thing is these are also super functional since we have a whole village of farmers, more or less, right over there. So. I will probably be doing some streaming of some different detailing things. Thank you for hanging around today, and let me know down in the comments what your favorite thing that we worked on today was, and what do you think of the build here? Like, it is my first foray into an entire build being that detailed, and it's very small, and it still took quite a long time. I love it. I think it's a great upgrade to my building styles, and I feel like I learned a lot of things about details and colors just like I wanted to today. Don't forget to like the video, and consider subscribing if you're not already part of the Chaos Coven. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!